Uh, I suppose this door is a different colour to the others. been waiting for so long. Why are you doing this? It began 1300 years ago. Humanity, finding itself on the brink of extinction, undertook a last ditch rescue plan called Project Gestalt. Gestalt? Do you still not remember, Grimoire Vice? Then let's give you a refresher. <laughs> Vice! My... mind... I... I remember... Devola... Popola... You are not human... In fact... Oh no... <laughs> Yeah, sometimes the truth can be a real bitch. You want to finish that thought for him, sister? All of us, every person standing in this room, are mere shells created by the true humans. What are you saying? You still don't get it? You aren't human. So then humans, I mean, the true humans, are extinct? No, they still live on. You know them as shades. Each shade is a twisted remnant of what was once a human being. Crazy, huh? Now let's skip the part where you stand there with your mouths agape and just get down to business. Wait. Wait! Sorry, but we're gonna be needing that shell of yours. The rightful owner has been waiting for a very long time. Please don't be angry with us. We are only doing our duty. Our endless existences have a single purpose. To control the lives of others in accordance with the will of the true humans. You have your own motives, your own desires. And we have ours. I fear it really is just that simple. Don't speak such foolish mess. Sorry. You and us, we're the same. Tools in the hands of a master. No, I'm nothing like you. Uh, to be destroyed, devil uh, destruction. Pog. Wait, you actually lived? I didn't think you'd survive that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I did try to stop Popola first. Devola. Popola, are you crying? No, don't die. You know, Popola, I understand now why we're twins. It's because, because we were born without souls. Devla, I can't stop the bleeding. Oh God, I can't stop it. This world is too, uh, too lonely for one without a soul. There's too much emptiness. Our 
our souls are missing. And yet somehow our tears still work. It's kind of weird. Sorry, sis. I love you. Devil! Devil! Don't you go! No! No, I can't be alone! Devil! Bother complain about the song this time. Please don't do this, Popola. You and Devil were like parents to me. Those two have watched the world wither from time immemorial. The coolness of such a fate is difficult to imagine. I don't want to do this. I don't want to fight her. Stop bitching and start fighting. It's the only way. There's no point in trying to stop it because it plays Carnis quite straight after anywhere. No stopping. No stopping ever. <laughs> what a ring. The bridge! Blast! We're I've got an idea! Where the f is it going? <laughs> I fear we're done for. It'll be all right. Huh? You know, when I was young, I I hated my eyes, and now that I'm older. I hate what my body has become. But there's something else there now. Something like pride, you know? I mean, without all this, I couldn't have become your friend. Goodbye, my friends. Thank you for everything. Emil. For so long. All I could do was destroy. But now, I have a chance to save something. No! Now get going, okay? Emil! Don't worry about me. I'm gonna be fine. Emil! Emil! Stable, and Vice can't stop arguing with people. I hope they can hold it together once I'm gone. Well, I guess they'll just have to learn.
I'm scared. I don't want to die. Darkness, blackness without end. It goes on and on. Eyes closed, eyes open. Eyes open, matters not. The darkness is joined by a mysterious sensation, one created by mingling a blessing of sleep and the unease of a ter tremble. Never ending cold, terrible never ending cold. Is this a dream? Thinking of, thinking to pinch his cheek, he reaches for his face, but his hand doesn't move. In fact, his hand has disappeared altogether. He looks at his arms and sees only bone. He looks at his feet and sees they have disappeared, along with the rest of his legs, up to the thigh. What body remains begins to leave him, then crumbles into fragments smaller than dust his body is going soon it will be no more is this death suddenly he recalls his past he remembers the time he lived with his sister and the very act of recollection recollection is like a shooting star despite lasting only a moment it brings color to the darkness Soon more memories come, gathering atop of each other, one after another, until they meld into a warm, glorious light. Emile's dream, promise. Wake up, wake up! A set of covers are torn from the boy, leaving his eyelids exposed to the merciless sun. Hey there, lazy bones, said the voice again. The boy's vision, blurry at first, gradually grew more clear. Before him, her face aglow with a radiant smile, his older twin sister, Hula. Morning, Hula. Don't look so cheery, but the teacher's gonna get here any minute. Hula grabbed her brother and pulled him beneath the bed with her, where they were waiting with a host of dust bunnies for their instructor to arrive. The moment Emil started asking questions, Hula shushed him by placing a finger on his mouth. Don't start. We already agreed on to this yesterday, remember? We're going to jump out and give the teacher the scare of her life. A few ticks of the clock and the door opened, and a slight woman enters the room. Good morning, Hula. Good morning, Emil. Are you ready for... Hmm? Emil glances at his sister and sees she is trying to stifle a laugh, which has the unfortunate effect of making a laugh rise in him. Then the dust bunnies decide to get in on the act and swirl up in their noses and cause the tricksters to sneeze in unison. Suddenly, the face of the teacher appears between appears in the space between the bed and the floor. There you are, you scap scamps. This is your fault, said Hula. You ruined it by sneezing. Me? cried a wounded Emil. You sneeze just as loud. That's enough, both of you, said the teacher, as she attempts to hide her amusement. Crawl out from under there and let me take a your temperatures already. The pair happily strip, shimmered, uh, shimmied out from their hiding place and stood before the teacher. She is a fair woman with a kind voice, one Emil would be happy to lift them to for the rest of his life. In fact, he often thought that her walk it, waking him in the morning was his favourite part of the day. The teacher finds her seat, hunkers down and lightly pats her leg to which Meal happily leaps on into her lap. She then slides a chilly thermometer under his armpit, causing a shudder to race through his body. I'm sorry, just 
be a brave boy for a little longer, all right? Emil used to hate having his temperature taken daily. The thermometer was just da so darn cold, but he'd become used to it after being at the facility for the past two years. His mother and father had perished in an accident many years before. He'd been told the facility they sent him to was a simple home for orphans such as him, but he'd always had his doubts. After all, most orphanages weren't st staffed by doctors in white coats who held lessons involving repeated asking of strange questions, nor did they attach wires to the body of the charges and force them to enter enormous boxes. The process is endless, the tests unceasing, and yet Emil feels his teacher somehow floating above it all. She would talk to him about everyday problems, read him books, and even share a meal when the time was permitted. She is the closest thing he has to a mother. With both of the temperatures taken, Emil and Hula wait for breakfast. But something is different this day. The teacher is strange, somehow off. Emil, she said quietly, do you remember what day this is? Emil looked over to his sister and sees her staring at him with an enormous grin. Nah, she says, you gotta figure it out yourself. But despite his best effort, Emil comes up empty. I'm sorry, ma'am, he says at last. I don't, I don't know. With a smile, the teacher reaches into a pocket of her white coat and withdraws a small package. It is a bag neatly closed with string and tied at the top with a bright red ribbon. Happy birthday, Emil, she said. In fact, happy birthday to the both of you. Oh, thank you, cries Emil. Can I open it? Of course, replies his teacher. I'm afraid it's not nothing so special, but I hope you'll enjoy it regardless. Emil carefully unties the ribbon and opens the bag, revealing a small pie pile of cookies. They are the same snack that they always received at the facility, but the fact that they came from his teacher made them somehow special. As a gasp escaped his mouth, his sister couldn't help but giggle beside him. Her eyes were fixed on the bright red ribbon all, all the while. Happy birthday, Hula, said Emil as he reached into the bag and withdrew a cookie and offered it to his sister. Needing no further encouragement, the girl crammed the cookie into her mouth and swallows it in two bites. Happy birthday to you too, Emil. Then, as though remembering something, she leaps forward and runs to a small chest of drawers the two of them share. After forcing open a stubborn drawer, she pulls a single sheet of paper hidden underneath under a white coat and runs back to her brother. Here's your present, she said, thrusting the paper to at him with a slightly embarrassed look. When he glances down, he sees the words, Happy Birthday Emil, scrawled on it in shaky child's hand, along with a picture of a generously coloured person who had been created from every crayon in the box. That was me? Unable to stop himself, Emil wraps his sister in a massive hug. Thank you, he whispers as she returns the embrace just as tightly. I'll make sure to draw you one on our next birthday, okay? My sister was there. My teacher was there. It was my birthday. I thought I'd never be happier. I'm glad Hula's drawing is the last thing I'll remember. I sense a deep and perfect darkness descending on my eyes, and I realise my time has come. I'm so terribly cold. As I try desperately to remember what it felt like to be embraced, I wonder if this horrible face is all that's left of me. Hula, I'm sorry. I couldn't keep my promise. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But... <laughs> Come in to join you now. Just hold on. Wake up. Wake up. Please, wake up. 
Come on, Emil. Wake up already. Hula? Is that you? You haven't changed a bit, have you, lazy bones? Hula, have you come for me? Am I dead? No, Emil. You're not dead. I'm just here to keep my promise. In that moment, the world of blackness surrounding me explodes with colour. Red, yellow, blue, and so many others. Colours I have no names for. Colours I've never seen. Never even seen. It's like someone is using every crayon in the box. I told you I'd always be watching over you, didn't I? Hula, I don't... Don't worry about it, you butt. Looking after little brothers is just what big sisters do. Her voice is fading. Sorry, Emil. Looks like I'm out of magic. Hula, wait, let me come with you. But you are with me. I'll always watch over you. So we'll always be together. Hula, no, don't go. Don't cry, Emil. I want you to be happy. Hula. Promise me that you'll live for both of us. The darkness enveloping me flows away, replaced by a brilliant blue sky. I don't know where I am or what I'm supposed to do, but it's okay that I'm here. I know that much more now. She's given me the courage to accept that. No more crying. I'll live with a smile on my face, because that's the promise I made her. Educated warrior.
Let's go. Yeah. She thought I got it. Ends here. Strike hard. Hold nothing back. How can a mere tool hope to stand against the Shadow Lord? Don't speak in such a manner, fool. I am nothing like you. I'd let her go on a little longer so you could actually speak a bit more. Don't relax yet. It's not over. Strike it when it has stopped. Whoops. <laughs> well, I'll let her go a little longer. I know. Hey, sunshine. I ain't so but I think your heart is Gone. The sadness is gone. It's just a bunch of white light now. What the hell's going on here? You can't tell, Tyron. 
You're not the only voice in my life anymore. I've experienced fear, hate, and no sympathy. I'm a curse, a freak. I know that. But guess what? He still accepts me. He still forgives me. Time slowed. Oh, come on. You're doing this for him? I'm tired of this world and everybody in it. But I'll become his sword one last time. Hopefully he's vulnerable. He is. Ow. Let's see if he heals. So let's have a bunch of shots ready just in case. Didn't really heal. Oh no. Forgot he did that. <laughs> someone else's body. I don't want it. There's another girl inside this body. I can hear her. She won't stop crying. She says she wants to see her brother. You've just been possessed? This girl loves her brother too, just as much as I do. It's not right, you know? It's not right that she can't see him. The shade that possessed her is gone. 
I'm dabbing. <laughs> dabbing and slowing down time. decided to push me beyond my limits. I should have taken that job as a cookbook when I had the chance. Vice, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I... Only joking. I hate cookbooks. But let's go out of the way. I have one final task to fulfill. Where are you going? Why to stop him, of course. But after that, it's up to you. Only you can see this battle to its conclusion. I wish you luck, my friend. You can't. I swore I'd always fight by your side. You are an exceedingly stubborn lad. You know that, yes? Perhaps that's why I've so enjoyed our time together. But I fear this is where our journey ends. Vice! Oh, and remember what I told you about using my full name. Well, forget it. I've grown rather fond of Vice. Vice. I knew you'd come around. Don't let it go to your head now. something so since they're all wise might as well swap to the higher damage spear I have something to defend I have a reason to live be gone as thought
You know, Sunshine, that Black Scrawl has almost completely taken you over. Yeah... I know. But goddamn, we had fun, huh? Killing and killing and more killing. What a rush. Yeah. Wait. No. No, no, no. It wasn't fun at all. I turned you into a killing machine. I spread evil and chaos around the world. But it all feels so empty now. Why? I don't understand. Sorry. Looks like you stayed inside me for a little too long. Sunshine. Stop! Don't be nice to me! Don't make me feel like this! I'm gonna swallow you up, Sunshine. Gonna swallow you whole. What is it? Listen to me. The shade inside me is growing, and I can't stop it. Soon, real soon, I'm gonna go berserk. I can't hold it back anymore! Kaine, you have to fight. You have to- Just shut up and listen to me! <laughs> So there's no way anyone can stop me. Please. Before it comes to that, I want you to kill me. Consider it enough of a request. Karen, I don't want to hurt my friend. Well, hell, sunshine! It's not like I can stop it! When gestalts go out of control, they lose their minds! Both of our memories will be completely overridden! Hurry. Run. Run! Kill me. Run. You defeated the Shadow Lord. You can rest. You rescued Yona. But now I can't. We made it this far because you were with us, Kane. I'm who I am today because of you. I'm not going to give up on you. I'm not going to abandon someone I love. I'm gonna save you! I swear it! Jesus, I can't hit these at all. Hey, I broke one accidentally. I... I... Well, there might be one way to save her. Who said that? It don't matter, so don't ask. Just shut up and listen. Wait, are you... I said, listen! There's a way to save Kaine's life, all right? But you're gonna have to make a difficult decision. Do whatever it takes. When the time comes, I'm going to pin Kaine down. And as soon as I do, you need to stab him in the heart. No, I 
chance. Bye. Don't believe me. Stand around with your thumb up your ass and watch your time and tear it. to save your precious Kaine. There are two ways to do it. One is to plunge your sword into her chest. That's what she wants after all. Freedom from burdens. Freedom from life. What's the other way? The other way is to make her a normal human being again. But to make that happen, you gotta trade your own existence for hers. Well, there you go. Good luck with that. You're that shade. The one who lives inside Kaine. Why are you trying to help her? Probably for the same reason you are. Enough talk. Make your choice. Well, these are the two endings. You have to choose this one first. Because if you choose the other one, you cannot gend and see. inside Kaine's body, tormenting her from within. I felt her pain, her emotions, as if they were my own. And there was so much pain. So when I say she's free now, I want you to believe me. Thanks to you, Kaine has been forgiven and saved. Oh, wait. She had a final message for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Kaine. I don't think I killed her fast enough actually. I suppose that the cutscenes again probably counted. Oh great. I'm gonna have to climb the entire tower again. Unfortunately, that is the last boss that I have to speedrun, and then there's no more bosses to speedrun. Oh, 
And that was pretty fast. And that's why I swapped to that spear, because I knew I was going to fight Carnie, and I realized, oh wait, I lost Wise, so I'm going to have to just, I might as well swap to my spear that has extra physical damage and less magic, because I have no magic anymore. There is a possibility I got the trophy. I'm also not entirely sure whether getting an indency adds anything else. But even if it doesn't, I'm still gonna do one more. Even though I don't technically have to. But I wanna get all the weapons upgraded so that I can read the stories to you. And may as well do another playthrough, because I got a lot of the rare items from the Flying Shades in that run. I'll probably skip, I'll probably like, maybe may, not, maybe not show like getting all of the things in a video. Because getting them black pearls is going to be boring. I might just make like a montage of it and show like how ridiculously long it took. Because as we can see, most likely the problem which I'm going to have is getting the black pearls and large gears. Because we ran B2 so many times and we've had like two gears at max. Like it's either two or one gear and we've killed like probably over 5,000 robots. Nah, it's probably not that bad, but it's at least over 2,000. Like, it's an obscenely low drop rate. See if there's any post credits. Okay, your choice is soon allowed you to view. See, I don't think that it adds anything else, but might as well just run back through again. Okay, well, I'll go and check the trophy and if I got it, we'll continue in the library. If we didn't, I'll have to add it to the end of this video.
Okay. Time to kill Carney again. I'm gonna swallow you up, sunshine. Kaine? Listen to the shade in so soon. I get Kaine. Just that's Not sure if you just have to survive. Oh, I can't slow down time. It's not like I can stop it. When gestalts go out of control, they lose their minds. Both of our memories will be completely overridden. Kaine! Honestly, Brennan might be the best option. Can't get rid of the fly things. We made it this far because you were with us, Kane. I'm who I am today because of you. I'm not going to give up on you. I'm not going to abandon someone I love. I'm going to save you. I swear it. Crap. Uh, still got two minutes though. It don't wait. I said, listen! There's a way to save Kaine's life, alright? But you're gonna have to make a different decision. Do whatever it takes. When the time comes, I'm going to pin Kaine down. And as soon as I do, you need to stab her in the heart. No, I can't! It has to be done. Don't believe me. Stand around with your thumb up your ass and watch her die in terror. Because I can't do the other one. Okay, still got about a minute. Oh, this doesn't count. Alright, I don't know how I didn't kill her in time last time. I still like had a minute left. <laughs> 